Cisco Firepower Threat Defense 622 Firepower Device Manager. So we did the initial uh, script using the console um, and FDM now is accessible and now we'll configure the uh, next gen firewall. So we'll go ahead and log in here. Once we're logged in, uh, we'll have a screen that automatically pops up that'll walk us through some of the basic configuration. So we can see the connection diagram shows us some green, you know, orange or red um, coloring. You can see the rule set. Here we, we uh, select the manual IP address for, uh, in our case, IPv4 configuration. Go ahead and give it an IP address. The default mask is set for the mask that we need it for, for this particular range. And then we'll enter a gateway IP as well. And we'll ping that later on in, in a test. We'll turn off IPv6. As we scroll down, we can see some of the settings that we did during the, the scripted uh, configuration using the CLI. Um, you can see Cisco Umbrella there is being used for DNS on the management uh, platform and the, uh, the host name of the firewall. So hit next. Now we'll set up the time. Um, it, in this case, we'll select the uh, time zone, but we're, I'm not gonna change anything. I'm using the default NTP servers in this case. Here, I'll add smart licensing. You're not gonna see this, but all I do is paste in the smart licensing uh, key uh, and then hit finish. Um, here, now we can select a couple other uh, wizard base type configuration. I'm going to close this off. I'm actually just going to jump out of this and, and uh, show you how easy it is to configure regardless. Um, so DHCP server, um, I'm going to come in and remove the current scope that's in place because it's tied to that inside interface, but I want to, I want to change that IP addressing. So very quickly then scroll down to the interface on the inside we'll, we'll change this and then once we're done that we're going to jump back into DHCP server um, and finalize that configuration. So that should be uh, finished there and remember when we're making all these changes we haven't actually pushed it yet to the uh, next gen firewall. Um, so these are actually being stored and then we'll push them all at once. So here on the, uh, the DHCP server side, uh, we select the inside interface. We give it a, a, a pool, a range within the, the scope. Um, and the big thing is, is make sure that you do hit enable DHCP server. Um, a lot of times that gets skipped um, and uh, you wonder why you're not getting DHCP. So you got to enable it. We'll go back to configuration here. We're going to use, um, we're going to override the auto configuration, which happens to get the IPs uh, from the outside interface. And we're going to use uh, Cisco Umbrella in this case. Here you can see some default rules, right? The access policy is pretty much a trust policy. And then you have a NAT policy uh, to ensure that we're NATing the IPs from the internal to the external interface IP address. Now we'll hit deploy and we'll send this out to the uh, next gen firewall. And when I mean send it out, it's on box, right? Uh, it's not like Firepower Management Center where we're actually pushing policy across the network. So while that's being pushed, we can come in here, we can modify some of the personal settings, right? Change the, the colors, There's a couple options there. You know, there's objects, uh, policies we kind of bounced around a little bit uh, already. And here's monitoring. Um, gives you a high level view of what's taking place. But really, we've pushed this out. I just want to make sure that we've got external connectivity, right? Um, so I'm pinging the gateway address to the outside interface, which is good. Um, and now I'm going to try the uh, internet. So I've, uh, I know I've got DHCP. I've got uh, access through the firewall. And I'm... Uh, um, got DNS, right? It's, it's actually resolving. And that's it. Pretty easy.